What's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about a ton of leaked content, including two brand new legendary cavalry commanders coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms. Now guys, it's 11 p.m. and I just updated my website with the two new legendary commanders that are coming soon. We have here uh, Jadwiga and Zhang Yu. I did look up how to or pronounce this. I think it's Jadwiga. Jadwiga? I, I don't know. You can roast me in the comments section below. But guys, we also got information on the skill lock feature. And there are some content creators who have already talked about these two new commanders, which I'm going to do. But I'm going to start with the skill lock feature first because this is amazing, right? This and when i'm saying amazing it's just it amazes me how lilith continues to screw up these simplest things right okay so let me just be clear one this is a leak okay so this is a leak but you can see this is a picture of it in the game so this has got to be close to the final product as we're gonna get right because it's literally you could see it in the game the way that it looks to me like this works is it says on the bottom drag to choose which skills can be upgraded right so if you bring a commander to four stars accidentally, then you can drag this to the two. And then when you upgrade skills, then it will only upgrade the first two skills, right? But the problem with this is it doesn't actually solve the problem that the community wanted solved. The community wanted to be able to choose the skill that they lock, which in some roundabout way, this technically fits that description. But when you think of, you know, when they, when you say, I'm going to make it so that way you can lock a skill you don't want this, a slider, what the, f this slider functions the same way as just not starring up a commander. That's literally all this is right. So Lilith, you know, if, if, if this feature makes it so I can't get a five, one, five, five, for example, which, you know, based on this image, that's what it looks like, right? Cause you can't drag this to four without it overlapping the two. So this, this feature functions exactly the same as the star feature, right? And I get the point of like, if you're a new player and you get Frederick from the gold keys and then you bring him up to four and then it's like, oh wait, crap, his first skill is the best one. That's this solves that problem, but it doesn't solve the problem of there being commanders that have huge investment costs for skills that people don't actually want. Um, that's the problem we thought you were fixing, right? Cause that's the real problem. Who cares if you mess up Frederick or Caesar or whoever from the gold keys, no one cares about the gold key commanders. Right. And by the time you actually get a mightiest governor commander, you're not going to make this mistake. So Lilith, you literally, it's, it's kind of sad. You literally wasted your time, right? It looks like you wasted your time. You didn't have to develop this feature because no one's going to care about this, right? It doesn't solve the problem. The community wanted solved. I don't understand how Lilith finds a way to, you know, ruin this, the simplest things, right? When you say you're going to be able to pick a mightiest governor commander, people thought, great. I can pick my mightiest governor commander. Not, oh, you can pick one from three. Like, oh, oh you can pick your will commander. Oh no, no, it's actually pick one of three. Oh, you can lock a skill. Oh no, you can only lock skills in a certain order. Like wh why do they have to make it complicated? Like we draw conclusions as a community from point A to point B using the simplest logic possible. And yet somehow Lilith finds a way to complicate it in a way that everyone's going to be pissed off about this. Everyone's going to be pissed off about this. And the worst part is that they spent time and money making a system that no one cares about. And no one's really going to use outside of their first week of playing the game. Okay. Let me take a chill pill. Let me take a chill pill. Let's switch gears. Okay. Let's switch gears and look at something that's more exciting. Okay. My rant is over. My rant about skill lock is over Lilith. You're, you're embarrassing. Okay. You're super embarrassing. Let's take a look at the two new, uh, legendary commanders coming to the game because we have a cavalry conquering and skill based legendary commander, and we have a cavalry garrison mobility based legendary commander. Okay. So we have Zhang Yu and Jadwiga and these commanders look like they could be really, really interesting. Okay. So we're going to go over Zhang Yu first, because to me, he's a little bit more exciting. Okay. So his active skill has a rage requirement of 900. So this is officially the lowest rage requirement in the entire game. Sorry, Genghis Khan, you've been booted out of that spot. It's called warlords courage. And it says deals direct damage to up to three targets and a forward face fan shaped area with a damage factor of 1700 damage delta each target is reduced by 25 percent for each additional target for every other aoe commander in the game that's 15 percent so you really have a pretty substantial downside to hitting multiple targets with this skill but you know it does only cost 900 rage so it is what it is personally i'd rather it be 
three targets, a thousand rage, 15%, but whatever. Anyway, successfully hit targets also suffer 30% reduced defense for three seconds. I feel like there's tons of commanders in this game that reduce defense, right? We have Lubu, we have, I think Ethelfled reduces defense. The, I think uh, Hannibal Bar, I, I don't know. There's, it feels like there's so many defense reduction buffs in this game. Uh, but anyway, cool. We reduce their uh, their defense by 30%. It's AOE, it's three seconds. It's great, okay? It, it, or, I, I shouldn't say it's great. It's fine, it's fine. This is like a standard debuff okay this is a standard debuff snow hooved stallion this is the second skill here it says cavalry units led by this commander gain a 40 percent increased attack and 15 percent increased march speed when attacked they have a 20 percent chance to gain 25 percent march speed for three seconds this effect can trigger once every five seconds so this gives you a really solid amount of cavalry attack which is great you get 15 percent march speed cool love that that's pretty standard right um and then when you are attacked you have the chance of buffing your own march speed by a significant amount which is nice um you know for at first this seemed like you know who cares like what who needs 25 more march speed but you're gonna see why in just a second okay skill number three says conqueror of all and it says while attacking strongholds or governor cities troops led by this commander gain uh five percent increased damage and normal attacks have a 10 percent chance to deal additional direct damage with a damage factor of 400 which can trigger at most once every three seconds so this skill is okay right it's okay five percent extra damage sure whatever 400 damage factor to a garrison is cool right you have a three second cool down there so you know it is what it is this will happen once you know roughly as frequently as your active skill maybe a little bit less often overall decent skill damage we're seeing on this commander his fourth skill though is really interesting it says forceful spearhead while on the map active skill cost is reduced by 50 rage so you officially can have a 850 rage requirement and then you can pair him with Genghis Khan to lower that even more with Genghis Khan's second skill so you can have an 800 rage requirement on your primary like <laughs> insane right insane okay anyway so your rage is reduced by 50 after using an active skill troops led by this commander will gain a stack of cavalry damage plus five percent and march speed minus ten percent for 10 seconds another stack is gained if they're being surrounded this effect can stack up to six times so every time an active skill is used you're going to gain five percent extra cavalry damage bonus okay now as long as you can pop off an active skill within 10 seconds you're going to get another stack before the first one goes away right so and you're going to be popping off skills way more than once every five seconds because if you pair him again for example with khan you're going to 800 rage requirement like you're going to be popping off these skills like absolute madmen right especially with the skill tree like this is going to be crazy amounts of skill going off with this commander so stacking this up to five times you get 30 percent bonus damage if you have all cavalry on the map right 30 percent bonus damage is crazy plus the five percent bonus damage that you get from the third skill so flat out 35 percent extra damage uh 35 percent extra damage from calves right then we take a look at his act on his uh expertise which is unbeatable warlord troops led by this commander deal an extra 10 percent skill damage right so that's really good there right because that's going to stack with the bonus damage right then it says when troops have gained a rage buff for more than one turn their skill damage will increase by 10 percent for three seconds this can trigger once every five seconds so i'm not really sure what a rage buff is is it when you restore rage right because then obviously this commander is like built to pair with Genghis khan or is a rage buff like the increase of speed of rage gain that you see here on on Leonidas is that a rage buff I don't really know what they mean by rage buff to be completely honest with you is horn of fury providing a rage buff right 30% chance to gain 50 rage is is that a rage buff? I, I don't know I don't know what a rage buff is hopefully they can clarify that I'm excited to see this commander in action I do have my doubts though I feel like potentially he won't be as good as Attila Takeda right I just I just don't think so um he's dealing AoE and maybe he'll have some other usage right but as far as like rallying with the cavalry commander I don't know. Maybe Attila Takeda will be, maybe he'll beat Attila Takeda, but I, I honestly, my gut feeling, my initial reaction is he won't be better, but who knows? I mean, this could be crazy skill damage. If you're really going to pop off the skill damage a lot, like, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see some testing will have to be done. And, uh, there's a lot of buffs here that trigger at certain times. So who knows? Maybe he could be crazy good, right? We'll have to wait and see. Let's take a look at Jadwiga, who's uh, perhaps a little bit more in interesting, right? Because she is the first garrison uh, cavalry commander, which is super, super interesting. Okay. Now she's a garrison mobility commander. What does that even mean? What, 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 
I'm gonna run to the flag really quick. That's, I don't know, who cares? Um, really, you're not gonna touch that tree with her pretty much. But anyway, her active skill, Might of the Pious, rage requirement of a thousand deals direct damage to the current target with, with a damage factor of 1500 and troops led by this commander deal 20% increased damage for three seconds. Really good stuff here. Really good stuff here. Second skill, Oath of Loyalty. It says while on the map, cavalry units gain 10% increased damage and 15% march speed. While commanding the garrison of a stronghold or your own city, cavalry units gain 20% defense and 20% health. Really good. Anytime we see a garrison commander with that breakdown of stats, you know they're going to be pretty tanky, right? Really tanky stuff here. What I like about this skill is that you actually get benefit from having the second skill, even when she's not in a garrison, right? There's still something here for you, even when you're not in a garrison. So this is cool, right? It's not much, but it's nice. Her third skill, Holy Blessing, says skill damage taken is reduced by 10%. While commanding the garrison of a stronghold or your own city, cavalry units deal 1% increased damage to archers, but take 5% increased damage from infantry. So I, I, that just doesn't seem like a nice trade to me, right? You know, I'm dealing 1%, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think this commander's meant to counter Nebu, right? But 1% extra damage to archers, like, who gives a shit, right? Why even why even include that? If it were up to me, I would just remove that part because I don't want to take 5% more damage from infantry, right? Like, screw that. So, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. This skill looks underwhelming to be honest um her last skill blade of dodging it says troops led by this commander gain 10 percent increased skill damage when they take skill damage they gain 50 rage per second for three seconds this effect can trigger once at at most once every eight seconds okay so that's a pretty large cooldown but you are getting 150 rage when you take skill damage so first of all i feel like she's going to be hard countered by attila takeda right like i i mean i don't it's just not only attila takeda but also like if you have a guan herald who's going to be dealing 5% more damage just because of her skill? Like, I don't know. Um, yeah, and her damage factor is like, you know, average. It's, it's just average. It's not even AOE, right? It's just a 1500 flat. So I don't know. I'm off the bat. I'm not that impressed with her, but we'll have to see again how the testing comes. Now, her expertise says troops led by this commander deal 10% increased damage to rally troops. When the active skill is used, damage taken is reduced by 10% for four seconds. So that's a really nice buff for four, four solid seconds, right? That's, that's higher than most buffs we see. My initial reaction is wondering how she'll perform with Saladin, right? If you have Jadwiga, primary, Saladin, secondary in a garrison, you're getting a lot of stats. Let's be honest. Like you're getting, you're getting 40% of stats, 20 defense and 20 health from her. Plus you're getting 20 more defense and 20% attack from Saladin. That's a lot of stats, a lot of single target damage factor, reducing the healing of that army. You're taking 30% less skill damage and 20% less counterattack damage. I, I don't know. This is a really interesting combo. Realistically though, you're probably going to use her with somebody like Theodora or some, you know, some other just generic ultra powerful garrison commander. You just throw them in there and boom, you'll be good. But I would like to see her paired with Saladin just to see like, how is that going to turn out right again? That would be interesting to see Saladin and Genghis Khan coming back, right? Coming back into the meta game that would be really really cool i would love to see these two commanders these are like the original new commanders coming into the game i would love to see them make a comeback and it feels to me like these are these commanders are sort of emulating the, those those early days so um i don't know if they're that impressive but they are interesting and it's always exciting to talk about so that's it for the commander news next we're going to be talking about special talents and finally we have some clarity as to how you can get a special talent okay and this is actually new so as far as i know this is not how special talents work in the game right now this is a Apparently, it's, to me, it seems like uh, this is a new way of getting a special talent, right? So the first time you forge a piece of equipment, there's an 11% chance that you get it. The second time you forge it, there's a 22% chance and so on and so forth. And by the fifth time, if you still haven't gotten that special talent, then it's guaranteed, right? You're guaranteed. Now, what I want to know is if when you get that special talent, oh, it says, yeah, until you get one. Okay. Because I was going to say, what if you, what if you forge five and you get it guaranteed and then you forge a six that you're going to get another guaranteed it doesn't look like it's going to be that way once you get the spell special talent for that piece of equipment it looks like it resets this counter so that's unfortunate it would have been great to just keep proccing the same special talent over and over again but whatever this is good news right it's still low percent chances especially with legendaries i mean like you know you who's gonna cross craft five legend i, I don't know still expensive, still crazy, but at least now we finally have clarity and we finally have a, a way that we can guarantee like, Hey, it is guaranteed. You will eventually get it. So 
hey, that's cool. Next, we're gonna talk about apparently a new way that they've uh, changed the hospital. There's now a way that you can hold up to 50,000 siege units in your hospital before you start filling up your regular hospital. I guess they just built a little side room on the hospital there that they're just putting all the siege dudes in. So basically if you're farming during like a big battle or something like that, you don't have to worry about if those siege units somehow get attacked or whatever, they're not gonna fill up your regular hospital. Now, if you overflow that 50,000, then they're gonna start to flow into your regular hospital. So yeah you can see down here this is this is the change i was looking i was like wait these aren't siege units it's down here you can see your regular hospital is up top your siege unit zone is down here with 50,000. and finally the way that kills are going to be shown on your profile is going to change so now those guys who have 1 billion t1 kills those absolute loser degenerates yeah their profile is going to look a bit goofy now okay because each kill is going to grant you a certain amount of points so it looks like t1 units will give you a fifth of a point a fifth of a point so if you have a billion t1 kills congratulations you just divided that by five you look like an idiot it looks like tier two units will give you two points right so this is a tier one unit is a fifth of a point tier two units give you two points tier three units give you four points tier four units give you 10 points and tier five units give you 20 points. So really interesting stuff here. Um, I don't know what compelled them to change this, but this is nice. This is a quality of life upgrade. And it just, you know, when at a glance, when you're just looking at someone's profile, now you'll have a better idea of, you know, how savage are they really based on their kills? Because if you see 2 billion kills, you're like, Oh my God. And then you realize that half of them are T ones and they're actually, they don't really well, I, I guess still 1 billion T4 and T5 kills is still a lot, but you get the point. Okay, this was a longer video than I thought, but I wanted to get all these leaks out there on my channel if you guys haven't seen it on somebody else's channel already. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video. As I mentioned uh, already, there is a link in the description to check out my website, riseofkingdoms.org. You've also seen it on the screen somewhere uh, over here, pretty much the whole video, right? So go ahead and check out my website if you want to see all my commander guides but also um, you can check out uh, the new information for the new commanders and it'll be easier to read here um, and of course like i said i'll update these pictures as soon as i get them all my social media links are also in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram discord facebook twitter all that stuff it's always down below and there's also a link below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free if you're pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks and it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms it's you're just looking at a bigger screen right it makes those open field fights way 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 easier to control your troops i love blue stacks it's, it's free to try if you guys don't like it you could just delete it and uninstall it after no problem at all but like i said it's free click the link and try it out with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace